So, Prehistoric Planet Season 2 is out, and y'all know I have to review it. Does this mean I'm back? I have no idea. We'll talk about that at the end of the video. Also, if you have been keeping up with the channel, I have been posting episode recaps on shorts, so if you want a more condensed version of how I feel about the season, go check those out. Otherwise, let's begin the review. Much like its first season, Season 2 of Prehistoric Planet consists of 5 episodes, each taking place in a different biome. Sir David Armbrough returns as the narrator, and it basically explores certain species and biomes that weren't covered in the first season. This episode starts on a small raft. A mosasaurus taking below the surface, a little Zalmoxis on the raft. Thankfully this time we don't see Get Eaten, and it instead finds a bigger raft that has a female on it. The scene then transitions to dwarf hadrosaurs called Tetris Hadros munching on vegetation, before a group of Hasagopteryx swoop in to, well, you know. These things are absolute menaces. Anyways, I like how this opening scene establishes the whole process of how dinosaurs can be found and can live on small islands. It's a very effective sequence. We then head to Madagascar and I like how we get to see more of the unique wildlife there. There's the adorable Simosuchus, a small vegetarian crocodile relative that honestly remind me a lot of the Diactodons from Wangmu Monsters with how they have tunnels to avoid predators. Though instead of a Gorgon Absid, this time it's a one-eyed Majungsaurus. Then onto one of my favorite parts of the episode, the section focusing on an early mammal, a Dalatherium. I like how this part shows how early mammals were like during the Mesozoic, like how they laid eggs but also fed milk to their offspring, like monochemes of today. We don't get to see a lot of mammals in dinosaur documentaries, so I'm happy that there's a section dedicated to it. Also we see Mashikasaurus again, switching from eating crabs to now hunting mammals, before it proceeds to get eaten by a constrictor. Should've stuck to seafood, buddy. We then jump to the Antarctic Peninsula for a bit, which I thought was an interesting choice and location, and we get to see another Dromaeosaurus chase scene. Nothing too spectacular, just an action scene in an interesting setting. The final part of the episode shows the Hatsagopters from earlier, now doing a mating ritual with a female. I do like how they show more of the Hatsagoptrix since in season 1 we really only got to see it fly into the sunset. Speaking of which, I do like the parallel of how the last scene in season 1 and the last scene of the first episode of season 2 both end with a Hatsagoptrix and a sunset. That's a nice touch. Though one thing to point out is that the content of the episode only lasted about 35 minutes and the remaining 8 minutes is spent with an uncovered section. Now in Season 1, these uncovered sections were posted on the Apple TV Plus YouTube channel which is actually is there, but now they're also placed here. I don't know what to make of that yet, but it is worth mentioning. The rest of the episode is good, I like it. It does a good job at re-establishing the premise and I think the pacing is also really good, a lot slower without being too slow. It helps re-immerse the audience into this world. Episode 2 starts with a herd of Isosaurus traveling across a volcanic plain to reach the nesting grounds in the caldera of a massive volcano. This whole section really makes for some great visuals, and it really does give a sense of scale of how huge this world is to make the sauropods look so tiny. We then travel to the deserts of Asia and see a bunch of baby velociraptors, which are really cute. Then we see a herd of sauropods joined in by some prenocephalae walking into a canyon. In there, a bunch of Tarbosaurus pop up, causing mass panic and the Pranocephaly to run straight to the waiting Velociraptors. The scene actually does a really good job at creating tension with the claustrophobic feeling of the canyon walls trapping the herd, and I also like how just the presence of the Tarbosaurus is enough to cause mass panic, which shows the effect of the presence of a predator, no matter the size difference. Also, the visuals in this scene remind me a lot of the Carnotaurus ambush in Disney's Dinosaur. Then we see a Coriza raptor nesting colony where at night, a Kurukulas eats and steals the eggs which reminds me of the scene in Dinosaur Planet. And then we get a cute scene of the baby raptors trying to figure out how the egg works. We then see a Tarkia surviving in the desert and I like how this part shows herbivore v herbivore conflict. It shows that the herbivores can be just as dangerous if not more dangerous than the carnivores without resulting in a straight up brawl because in nature, a display of strength is usually enough and fights rarely happen due to the risk of injury. The final part takes us back to the volcanic plains of the Deccan where the baby sauropods have hatched. This episode is really spoiling us with all these adorable baby dinosaurs, though the next scene does have them eating dung so 
make do with that information as you please. Anyways, a bunch of Rajasaurus pop up, which, by the way, they look beautiful. And they eat some of the babies, but the majority survive and make it through the forest. This episode adopts a much slower pace than the first one, which has its pros and cons. It does give more time to be immersed into the world, but it can also make scenes feel longer than they actually are. This one was also just actually longer than the first episode at around 38 minutes of content, which I don't know why they have different runtimes between episodes, but ending on a faster paced action is a really good way to conclude the episode. I do want to say that this episode has some great visuals of the landscapes. There's a lot of shots like that. Lastly, focusing on only like two settings does help the episode feel more cohesive and interconnected. Anyways, still a good episode. This episode starts with a bunch of baby as dark is learning how to fly over a lake, hosting a bunch of hungry Shimasukas. It's a very exciting way to start the episode. I really like this opening. One thing I noticed was that for some of the close-up shots, they use footage of an actual crocodile which I don't mind too much since the same Asuka small is not that far off from an actual crocodile. Then we see a bunch of fishing Austroraptors, can get Spinosaurus fishing but at least it's just some Piscopores here. Also I like how they took inspiration from modern day grizzlies where multitudes of them will congregate on a stream to feast on salmon, like how these Austroraptors congregate to feast on gar. We then get a spotlight on Beezle Bufo. And I like how it's not eating any dinosaurs and instead acts kinda cute. I said kinda. Also, I don't know why but this sequence of the Beezle Bufo trying to reach the water while avoiding the sauropods reminded me of Frogger. I don't- I- I genuinely don't know why. We then see a bunch of Pachycephalosaurus and I like how it shows the different uses of their dome heads to dig up roots and insects and to fend off rivals. Also once again, I commend this series for their fights how it's mostly an intimidation show until none of the competitors back off. Then the fight itself is not flashy but more brutish, but also without too much violence. I just really love this style of dinosaur fights, it's more realistic. The final part shows a T-Rex hunt and I like how they don't just go in guns blazing and instead wait for the tides to turn in their favor under the cover of night. Even then, they don't just rush in but they plan an ambush, which I don't know how scientifically accurate that is, but it's a cool scene. Also, I like how they show that the Amontosaurus aren't just sitting ducks, but rather a formidable foe that requires the combined effort of both Rexes to take down. I really like this episode. I think it's my favorite episode so far. There's a lot of action, but it's also presented creatively and has more nuances to it instead of just flashy violent showdowns. Though I will say, the way the Rex scene ended makes it look like there might be another section, but there's not, so it was kind of an anticlimactic way to end the episode, which is only 32 minutes, which is the shortest runtime so far, but those are just really nitpicks of an overall really good episode. Episode 4 Ocean starts with a Phosphorosaurus as it hides from bigger Mosasaurus by day and an adept hunter of lanternfish at night. I really like how you can get a very good sense of scale of the size contrast between the different species of Mosasaurus, and also some of the night scenes remind me a lot of Cruel Sea, which I think they definitely took inspiration from with how the cinematography of the large Mosasaur is similar to that of the light Pleurodon. We then see a bait ball and a bunch of Hesperonis and Cephactinus feasting on it, before the Cephactinus then turn their attention to the Hesperonis and other Cephactinus. We then see a bunch of, well, a lot of baby ammonites in a nursery pool, which they look so cute. And also, there's a cameo from baby pyraptors, which also look cute. It then jumps to a hunt between a large mosasaurus and two orangisaurus, and this section does a really good job of building up suspense. I actually wish they kept the scene going for longer to build up even more suspense. Also, I like how the hunt fails the first time, and then the second time, instead of showing us a chase scene again, it just cuts to the Mosasaurus breaching out of the surface with a youngster in its mouth. It makes the action not repetitive, which I really like. We then get to see the Ammonites again, and it shows all the weird shapes that Ammonites can take, and I really like how it just serves as a showcase of these unique and interesting creatures, which has always been a huge strength of the series. The final part takes us to the Antarctic Ocean, where we see a part of Mortarn area sifting the mud for food. I like this part because it shows unique feeding behaviors in a unique setting. This episode overall was very action-packed, much like the previous one, while also managing to feel completely different. 
and ending on a peaceful tranquil resolution is really a nice way to cap off the episode. It also does a really good job at making you actually feel like you're underwater with all the sound effects. It really helps with the immersion. So yeah, I like this episode. It's very well structured and focused on a lot of unique animals never before shown in a dinosaur documentary. The final episode starts with an old Alamosaurus passing away on a beach which attracts scavengers. First a couple of Chorodontids, then a T-Rex, and then two Quetzalcoatlus which have a fight with the T-Rex that ends with the Rex backing down. We then see a Globidens Mosasaur feeding on Ammonites. The few hundred that survive lay their eggs on the coastal reef. We then see a Stigineta, ancestors of ducks, congregating on a poisonous lake alongside Pectinodon, the babies of which feast on the flies, while the father hunts the Stigineta. It is mating season for Triceratops, and you know what that means? Fights for dominance. Yeah, that's 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 pretty much this entire section. The series ends with the mother Nanuksaurus hunting Ornithomimus, failing the first time, succeeding the second time. This episode is very, very action-packed, and honestly, I don't really like it that much. Don't get me wrong, it's not bad by any means, but the strength of this series has never been presenting action. It's always been showing new scientific discoveries and exploring interesting ideas. So ending it on an action-packed episode was not the best way to end the series. I much prefer the ending of Season 1 compared to this. If Season 3 does come out, I hope that this turn to action-packed episode won't be the trend going forward because it's not why I watch Prehistoric Planet nor is it as interesting as exploring unique scientific ideas. So yeah, I am kind of disappointed with how the season ended. It's not bad, but it could have been so much better. So, Prehistoric Planet Season 2. Where do I begin? Well, I'll say that visually it is just as spectacular as Season 1. The CGI is as great as ever, and I really like the cinematography in this one, especially in Episode 4. It still remains the best looking dinosaur documentary out there, no doubt about that. The content is also good for the most part, I'll get to specifics later, and I like the new cast of dinosaurs shown and the environments they live in. Now, this is where some of my problems with the series come to light. First of all, I think this series is really limited by being set 66 million years ago. It really does limit the different species of dinosaurs that can be shown, and as a result, a lot of the dinosaurs return from season 1. Now in some cases, this works well, like the House of Gopteryx, but in others, it just doesn't. It just feels like there's so much more potential if the series was not stuck being set 66 million years ago. Imagine all the unique fauna and environment if it were to depict the Triassic and the Jurassic. The more you try and milk this single time period, the less unique stuff you're gonna have to be able to show in the future. Seeing of less stuff, we lost quite a bit of runtime this season. All the episodes are less than 40 minutes, which means we lose out on quite a bit of content that could be shown. Also, it's just really weird that the episodes don't have a consistent runtime, almost as if they ran out of ideas for some of the episodes. I don't know, it's just a really odd problem that this season has. Like, I also don't know if this was by choice, and if so, why they made that decision. Another thing which I pointed out earlier in the video is the final episode. I'm sorry to keep ragging on it, but I really was just disappointed with it. It did leave kind of a bitter taste in my mouth. The action in this episode just felt like the same thing being repeated, and I commended episode 3 for making each action scene feel unique. And this last episode really just feels like they ran out of ideas on what to show. They didn't even choose a proper biome, it's just North America. All this being said, I still like the rest of the episodes. There's still a lot of great content shown in this season that is worth checking out. I think it's still a good show compared to others I've seen. It's just, the ending really affected the way I looked at this season and just, it didn't live up to its own standards. Now the big question is, is it better than season 1? I would have to say, no. I would say it's on par at best. But not better. Season 1 has the advantage that it was the first time we saw this prehistoric world and it presented a lot of unique and interesting ideas not explored in any previous dinosaur documentaries. Season 2 on the other hand just feels like more of what we 
kind of already saw therefore it's not as immediately spectacular because we've kind of already seen a lot of it it does explore new aspects but it still feels kind of the same so yeah i have mixed feelings about this season it's mostly good but a lot of the cracks do start to show and are more apparent and i'm also more critical about it because they set the bars really high in season one it's still a good show that i would recommend you check out but if you watch season one it won't have that same magic but hey that's just my opinion i still enjoyed the season and i do hope we get a season three just i really hope they maintain the standards they already set for themselves Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If it did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. And I know it usually after the inclusion there's a tier list section, but like I didn't think it was necessary to include it since I mean I'm, I don't think I'll be doing many of these videos anymore, and you know might as well talk about it now. So yeah, I mean this is kind of maybe a one-time thing. I don't know. Depends if if this video does well, I might do others, but I'm definitely not back back. You know, I might do. Uh, video here or there I might do a couple of shorts if I'm interested in that whole department thing but yeah um, it's probably gonna be like once once in a while kind of deal I guess with the way my channel is but uh, yeah I think that's that's it you know prehistoric planet season 2 is that go check it out and um, yeah I think that's about it I hope we get a season 3 um, I don't know if, I don't know, I mean, right now they seem to be kind of doing a yearly schedule thing, maybe, I don't know, but yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video, bye.